Hello, I welcome you all from Gynae Onco team. So I'm myself, Dr. Abhirami, a fellow in uh, Gynae Onco and with us is Dr. Rohit Ra Raghunath Ranande. He's a consultant. Hello. So today we are talking, welcome you, sir. Uh, so today we are talking about cervical cancer. Cervical cancer is the second most uh, cancer in the women worldwide and it is the most common cancer with a women presence in our OPD. So today topic is mainly regarding the treatment of cervical cancer. So, sir, what are the treatments available for cervical cancer? Yeah, so as you have rightly said, it's the second most common cancer in women in India. And it's one of the most commonest cancers that we see in our practice. Now, the treatment of cervical cancer basically depends upon what stage the patient is. So, staging is most important. Uh, roughly, every for every cancer, there are four stages. Uh, so, before uh, starting the treatment or before suggesting somebody or advising somebody any treatment, it's very important to diagnose uh, what stage it is. So, the, for the diagnosis, it involves a biopsy. In addition to that, it involves a good clinical examination because the staging of cervical cancer is still clinical. Uh, in addition to the uh, clinical examinations, all, there is also a role of doing uh, imaging. So, imaging would involve doing a CT scan or a MRI or a PET scan. So, roughly early stage, that is stage 1, and very early stage 2, that is 2A1, the treatment of choice should be surgery. In advanced stages, which is stage 2B and onwards till 3B, the treatment of choice is a combination of radiation and chemotherapy, which is called as concurrent chemo radiation. For very, very advanced stage 4B, where the cancer of, has spread to other organs like lungs or liver, then the treatment is only chemotherapy, which is called as only palliative chemotherapy. So, you meant surgery. So, what type of a surgery will be done? For yeah, surgery? so basically the treatment of choice for surgical uh, type of surgery for cervical cancer is called as a type 3 radical hysterectomy. Now, uh, it means that if you just do a simple hysterectomy, that is just the removal of the uterus, it may not be sufficient. So, in addition to removing the uterus, you also need to remove tissues which are on the sides. So, that is known as parametral tissue. In addition to this, there is something like lymph nodes also which need to be removed. So, lymph nodes are basically small nodes which are along the vessels where these cancerous cells can go. So, per se, it needs, it means doing a radical hysterectomy along with a pelvic lymph node dissection. So, this duration of the surgery and how long will the patient be required to stay in the hospital? Yes, so uh, basically it depends upon what type of surgery that you are doing. So previously, uh, this surgery was also offered using minimal access techniques that is either using laparoscopic surgery or robotic surgery. But since there is a recent paper or a recent evidence or trial which has shown that robotic surgery or laparoscopic surgery is inferior to open surgery for tumors more than 2 cm. So as a rule in our institute, for tumors more than 2 cm, we are offering them only open surgery. So, open surgery, the duration is around, along, around 3 to 4 hours and uh, the patient needs to stay in the hospital for about uh, 3 to 4 days after surgery. So, for the surgery, what will be the effect in the fertility? Like for the young women when we are telling about surgeries, so uh, your effect on fertility? Yeah, so uh, basically see uh, in patients where the tumor size is less than 2 cm and who are strongly desirous of uh, preserving their fertility. So, there is a unique surgery which is offered which is called as trachelectomy. So, where we can remove only the cervix along with the parametrial tissue along with the lymph nodes and then join the uterus again to the vagina so that her fertility can be maintained. Now, in a in situation where the patient is, uh, where the tumor is more than 2 cm and she is not a fit candidate for fertility preservation, then there is no other option but to go ahead with a radical hysterectomy. In that case, uh, she will not be able to conceive on her own. But in such situations, there is an option, especially <coughs> in cervical cancer, the commonest type of cervical cancer is a squamous carcinoma. So, in these type of patients, we can preserve the ovaries. So, later they can get pregnant by surrogacy. Okay. So, what is the long term side effects which are expected from the surgery? So, uh, that is what is something which is unique about surgery. So, practically uh, patient when the patient recovers after surgery, there are no long term side effects. 
but this is a major surgery so during surgery there can be some amount of bleeding which is expected and most of the time see when you are doing a radical hysterectomy you have to push the uterus sorry the bladder which is the urinary bag and the rectum which is the motion bag uh, down so in that there can be uh, a damage to some of the nerves so that is why uh, in some cases you might have to keep a catheter say for about uh, two weeks after surgery so 10 days to two weeks after surgery but per se there are no long-term complications because of this surgery so you said lymph node dissection can that cause any long-term side effects? yes so lymph node dissection is something uh, in about 20 to 30 percent in about 70 percent of the individuals there are no symptoms but in about 20 percent of individuals there can be some side effects uh, like call which mainly cause swelling of the legs so which is called as lymphedema and also there can be formation of sometimes formation of cysts which are called as lymphosis but most of the time these are not troublesome so you said next option is radiation therapy so that is uh, like what type of a radiation will the patient be getting and how long is the uh, treatment yes so uh, in fact uh, in advanced cervical cancer uh, radiation is the treatment of choice so basically this is uh, known as a uh, external beam radiation where the patient needs to take it for five weeks so the patient takes radiation from monday to friday Along with this, the patient also receives a small dose of a single drug chemotherapy. Uh, it's important to know that chemotherapy just has a radio sensitizing effect. That is, it will increase the if effect of radiation and the main treatment is radiation only. In addition to that, uh, the patient also will get a brachytherapy, which is like insertion of the radioactive source into the uterus and then giving it once per week for three weeks. Uh, in addition to that, uh, so there are different modalities of treatment. So the first primary or the conventional treatment is called as 3D CRT. But we have advances like the IMRT and IGRT where actually only the tumor tissue is targeted. And so the side effects because of the radiation are much less. So what are the side effects expected from chemo radiation? Yes. So coming to radiation, uh, it does have some side effects. So primarily the side effects are because of the radiation uh, being so if you look at the uterus in the body the uterus is sandwiched between the urinary bladder uh, on the anteriorly and the rectum that is a motion on the posterior. So most of the side effects are because of radiation uh, which can scatter radiation which can go to the other organs like for example uh, you might have increased urinary infections uh, because of radiation you can have uh, and a desire to go and pass urine frequently sometimes you might have loose motions when you are ra on radiation but overall radiation is quite well tolerated now coming to the side effects of chemotherapy uh, the the commonest drug which is used is cisplatin now cisplatin does have a uh, main is the kidney toxicity it can be toxic to the kidneys uh, it can cause diarrhea as well that is loose motions and sometimes it can be toxic to the ear that is it can uh, uh, reduce your hearing but most of the times it is well tolerated so this treatment can cause early menopause because, yes yeah. yes so basically see when you are giving radiation uh, even radiation as low as 3 gray is said to be toxic to the ovaries and that can cause an ovarian failure uh, so uh, the women can have menopause uh, post radiation so that is why in young women it is important that a procedure called as a, la a transposition should be done that is you cut now the ovaries are into the pelvis so that is the area which is going to get radiation so what you do is you you detach the ovaries from their normal position and you push them up like you transpose them that is you uh, fix them up so that they are away from the radiation field and so the uh, the radiation effect cannot uh, cannot uh, cause the ovaries to get damaged and the ovaries will still remain functional and these women don't develop menopause. So what does your say about the chance of recurrence of the CA cervix? Yes, so technically see any cancer at any stage there are chances of recurrence but again as I said earlier the stage less is the chance of recurrence. Early stage cervical cancer the, has got excellent survivors. But if whenever, but uh, as the stage advances, the chances of recurrence are there. So that is why one needs to be on the regular follow-up even after the treatment is completed 
at least for the first two years uh, a checkup every three monthly is recommended and after that for the next three years once in six months is recommended so what type of testing will the patient be subjected on follow-up sir yes so patient needs to have a physical examination uh, uh, then most important it is it's important for patients to realize what symptoms uh, can suggest a recurrence like if you have bleeding again or if you have wipe discharge or if you feel that you are not eating well or your abdomen is swelling so these are um, most of the times these are the commonest symptoms uh, with which the uh, recurrence uh, the patients presents with recurrence to us uh, on uh, coming to your question where uh, uh, what they have what what tests they have to be subjected at every checkup so one most important is proper history taking that is asking for symptoms if they have any problems second is doing a good physical examination depending on that if you see any suspicious growth or something you need to take a biopsy and depending on that also either a ct scan or an mri or a pet scan might be done so any uh, methods to prevent recurrence uh, unfortunately, uh, we don't have any science or any treatment where we can prevent a recurrence. So it's only it's only in our hands that if unfortunately a recurrence occurs, it needs to be detected early. That is why, as I told you, regular follow up is most important. And please report for any symptoms that that you experience. I think we have covered almost all topics of cervical cancer treatment. I hope we have clarified your doubt. Thank you, sir. Thank you.